money, the love of it, is the root of all evil. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Pay unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and under God what is God's. It's been an important topic for all of history and certainly remains so today. And in this installment of the Eight Facets of Life, Mark and Chris take a closer look at finances and keeping it in balance with the other facets of life. We continue our series on the eight facets of life, joined by author Chris Conley as we continue to take a look at ways we can achieve better balance. We've talked about personal development and family. We've talked about relationships. We've talked about health. We've talked about career. And next we're going to talk about finance, which a lot of times goes hand in hand with career, but also there's a lot more to finance than simply just the job. It's also how we tend to use that money that we make from the job. Yeah, I've, I've heard studies that people call it in to a radio show and said, what do you make and what would it take to be better financially? And pretty much there were people called in making 30,000 a year and they thought if they made 60, it would be great. There were people called in that were making 60 that thought they needed 100. And it just went on and on. And the fact of the matter is, it seems like for most people, they think that they just need a little bit more in order to get by. And a little bit more, and a little bit more, mm. and a little bit more. <clears throat> and not only do they want a little bit more, but they want it right now. Exactly. So when you talk about finances, it's also very important to, and we've, we've touched on this in some of our other discussions, having that long view, delaying the short-term satisfaction in order to fulfill some long-term goals. Right. We, we can't chase the shiny object. Um, you know, there's people that would stand in line for the next telephone and pay the top price, or in my case, I play golf, going out and buying new golf clubs. But if you wait a year, you're going to get that same product for about half the price. So um, I know my parents, they bought nothing on credit. If they didn't have the cash, they didn't buy it. And I wasn't quite there. I was almost there. But um, credit is so easily attainable at this point in time. The key is that if you use credit, you have to get that paid off in the 30 days. And when you talk about credit, that also goes back to having a budget, and it goes back to it's easy to write down what you want to spend, but then it comes back to that commitment of sticking to that budget. Right. Um, I've heard Dave Ramsey make the comment that every dollar has a name, so meaning that anything that I make is going to go to a certain place. And this is important, and I think the earlier we can teach that to our children, the better. Um, there's been people that I've talked to, or listened to, I should say, that have talked about you know, the envelope system, where we had a save envelope, a give envelope, and a share envelope. And letting the kids make mistakes when they're young isn't a bad thing, because it's better to make a $5 mistake on a junk toy than it is to not have that training and then go out and make a $1,000 mistake or a $10,000 mistake later in life. Well, I think that's part of the, what <coughs> the problem is the fact that you know, we, I don't want to get into a deep financial discussion here, but you, when, once the United States and the other currencies went off the gold standard and all of a sudden dollar's a dollar because we say it's a dollar, money no longer necessarily has the same credible, tangible backing that it did hundreds of years ago when, if you want to go to a barter system, but for, particularly with children, if, if you want to teach them the value of money, you really do need to have some tangible evidence, which is why I think that envelope system is so good and why some parents will debate you on whether allowances are good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've heard uh, some speakers talk about the allowance. They don't like the term. Um, they've created like a, a mini economic system inside their house. So as the kids do chores, they're paid on Saturday. And along with that, the older they are, they're actually given the opportunity to go buy their school clothes. And if you're going to go to that extent, it's really important that you allow them to make the choices they're going to make. Now, within reason, you've got to have some guidelines. But I heard a couple talk about their daughter was all about the designer stuff. So she could only buy two or three outfits, where the son was all about the bargains. So he spent half his money that he was allotted. And she was done laundry every third night, and he was done laundry every two weeks. So it made a big difference in the way they were raised and how they took care of their belongings because they had some sweat equity in it. And I think that's interesting also that you have to be aware that Different people are going to learn different ways. Mm -hmm. So what works for one child, what works for one family, isn't going to necessarily work for all of them. Right. Yeah. You've got a, a seven-step uh, plan for budgeting? Yeah. Well, it's actually Dave Ramsey. He's probably the most well-known person with uh, finance. And I won't go through all seven, but the first two, the first one was to save $1,000 for an emergency 
plan. And I agree with that 100% because when the washer or dryer breaks, you've got to get that fixed or a car repair. Uh, it's not only going to uh, add time to your workload, going to the laundromat, it's going to cost you more money. So you've got to have that emergency fund. The second one that I think the majority of, or many people have a problem with is debt. And they've let these credit cards get out of uh, whack. Um, I, I believe that his logic is you list all your debts in from lowest to largest and then work with a vengeance to knock off number one and then number two and work your way down. And initially when I heard that, it didn't make sense because I, my thought was go after the highest interest. Mm -hmm. But his comeback was um, logical thinking didn't put you in this mess. Logical thinking is not going to get you out of it. So with that, I agree 100%. And I, and I understand he calls it the debt snowball. So by knocking off that first debt, and then moving quickly to the second, you've got that momentum and you feel good about it and you continue on the progress. Yeah, there's a sense of accomplishment it, saying, yeah, I've, exactly. I've gotten that one completely taken care of, that's out of the way. Thank you very much, Chris, as we continue with our Eight Facets of Life series. If you've missed any of the previous uh, episodes, you can catch up on those online at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. <coughs> and Chris is available to teach the Eight Facets of Life through workshops with your group or organization, you can contact him at theconleys102 at gmail.com.